Hi, my name is Ian Hazacostas, and I'm game director of World of Warcraft. I I've loved this game for over 20 years. I, I gave up a lucrative career to follow my dream of contributing to it. It's fair to say I spend every day doing something that I love. Or at least, I did. Because in the last few days, my life has become absolute hell. Hi, Ian! Oh! Hi, Evertel. When we get player housing, will we be able to have an apartment in Grizzly Hills? <sighs> okay, so we have so many exciting new features to tell our players about. We're going to the Undermine. There are goblins there. Y you love goblins, right? Hey, Ian, will there be a new carpenter profession to make stuff for player housing? Mm -hmm. So there's a cool car. You can customize the car, guys. Yeah, great. What kind of customization will we have in our player housing, Ian? Soon we'll be having the final battle against Zalatath and the Void. So what you're saying is Void housing? Sounds amazing. The team are working really hard on... Player housing? All kind of features that... We can live in? You will... Enjoy. So houses will be fun? Yeah, they better be fun. Ah! I just need to hide for a year until this thing is out and we can talk about something else. Hey, Ian, how have you got a house already? Is this what housing will be like? Is this what ours will be like? I don't like the curtains. Can I change the curtains? I don't like the curtains. Knowledge is power. Hello, Internet. Taliesin here. Welcome to another episode of The Weekly Reset. Taliesin and Evertel's wondrous wisdom show in a week where we now live in a post-player housing announcement era. The Warcraft Direct wasn't exactly thin on the ground when it came to retail news. A release date for 11.0.7 in mid-December, as expected. A 2025 roadmap featuring a midnight reveal, as expected. A goblin-themed undermine zone, and raid for 11.1, as expected. But definitely less expected, that player housing announcement. Well, less expected for some, maybe. Do I expect them to be like, and also, player housing, it's coming guys, here it comes. I wouldn't be completely surprised if, you know, what if you've got the 2025 roadmap, and there's just a sneaky little, like, flag with a picture of a house or something on it. It's possible. There is a non-zero percent chance. And that's enough for me. But I don't want to go on about that. That will be the last you ever hear of that. The last couple of years have seen unprecedentedly huge sweeping changes to the very fundamentals of World of Warcraft. Dragon riding, war bands, a much more player friendly gameplay philosophy, the World Soul Saga, all of it massive, all of it very good in my opinion, but I don't think it's over exaggerating to say there has basically been nothing as ground shakingly gargantuan as this. It's been almost a week now and it's kind of hard to believe that we are now living in a time where player housing has been confirmed for the next expansion. It will be hitting the game in around about a year. It's a real thing which is happening and today we are going to talk about that using information from the reveal and from the numerous press interviews Ian has given since. Plus all the other lesser discussed secrets in the announcement and roadmap as well because there are plenty. Join us for the many secrets of the 2025 roadmap you may have missed. Okay, go, 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 go. Undermined. So, first things first, the zone and raid, just the whole feel of the patch, it's goblins. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that's not a secret, Evie, and you're right, it's not. It's been so not a secret that we were making videos about the Goblin 11.1 .1 patch since before the expansion even released. Everywhere you go in War Within, there's some loudmouth goblin hanging about talking unsubtly about this awesome place they know called the Undermine. It's like when Tally buys one of our kids a Christmas present a couple of months early, but he's so excited about it that he can't 
can't stop giving hints about it and then eventually usually just gives it to the kids way before Christmas because he can't wait any longer and then we have to buy all new Christmas presents for Christmas. It's like that, but with an underground goblin city. So yeah, not a surprise, even though there had been plenty of speculation that the upcoming Heronier story in 11.0.7 would lead into the much discussed Rootland Zone, but no, it's all goblins all the time. And we have goblin cartels to earn reputation with, which are not Covenants 2.0, okay? In fact, Ian literally apologized for the fact that as a player base, we get so scared of anything that looks even slightly like it might be Covenants 2.0. I'm going to interject and just apologize collectively to everyone for the Shadowlands induced PTSD. Like how the WoW, the WoW community at this point, it's like, like the butterfly meme, like, is this Covenants? No, it's not Covenants. We're just adding some, you know, some flavor and variety to your experience. These will work like the renown in Ajkahet, as in there will be one overall goblin reputation and renown tree that you're working towards, but every week you'll choose one cartel specifically to especially help out, and they'll have some unique benefits and rewards. So I'm going to take a wild guess and say that getting in the good books with the Bilgewater Gobos will award a red color customization for your car, while grinding out Venture Company renown is going to unlock the yellow color. I've just got a sneaky feeling in those particular rewards. Oh yeah, the car. There is a brand new unique feature coming with Undermind, the Hot Rod. Your unique way of making your way around the environs of the Goblin Metropolis is a spiffy new four-wheeler, which looks like it may be able to take the form of a three-wheeler. Customizable in looks, and performance. Choose to load points into top speed, obviously. Handling? Nah. Acceleration? Drift? Uh, sure, why not? Or boosts? And what is basically the beetle mount from Guild Wars? It's the exact same thing, but that's okay because I've never played Guild Wars, so I'll never know. What I do know is that this mount and its very floor-based mechanics means that there is no flying in the Undermine at any point during the expansion. Yeah, like Undermine is not a flyable area, really. It's a more dense urban space. Um, we knew from the outset that it was not going to be a place that was well suited to skywriting. And if there's one thing I know about the WoW community, it's that if there's one thing they don't appreciate, it's being kept grounded in the new zones of worldofwarcraft.com. It won't surprise you to learn that it was a shit show, obviously. Hello? They like it? F*** me. Scrap that. They like it. Seriously, the community actually seems really behind the idea of the pimped out turbo cars. We've been promised that they are going to go really fast and be really fun. And honestly, I think there's an element at the moment of people just trusting Blizzard when it comes to new stuff and... Yeah, everyone is generally really hyped about the cars. And that's the secret that I am revealing in this segment. The community isn't obsessed with flying as a given as might have been previously assumed. They're actually totally open to new ideas for ways to get around as long as they sound enjoyable and engaging. Let's hope it is. Mythic Plus. We learned with Ian's interview with Buffed. The complete season two Mythic Rota lines up like this. Cinderbrew, Meadery, The Rookery, Sanctum and Dark Flame Cleft, obviously, but also the new dungeon, Operation Floodgate, the Motherload, rather predictably because of all its goblin themed fun, and Theatre of Pain from Shadowlands, which... Uh, look, I've given my view on Shadowlands in War Within Mythic Plus before, and I still feel the same now, okay? It's too soon. Shadowlands was when so many of the players who have finally come back to the game, this expansion, stopped playing in the first place, and I just don't think it's a great idea to serve those returning players Shadowlands content. Or me, for that matter. It's not good to serve me Shadowlands content either. And it's not bad. Actually, it's a very good dungeon. It just makes me feel icky 
You know, you understand, right? You get it, right? Operation Floodgate, though, I very much like the old school vibes of just like a normal length dungeon launching and being thrown straight into the competitive rotation a week after. That hasn't happened since Legion, and I am totally here for it. But you know what, Internet? I don't think we've really uncovered enough secrets so far, so let's take a closer look now at that 2025 roadmap and something that no one in this presentation mentioned at all is slipped in as a part of patch 11.1. Warbands UI updates and specifically Warbands camp collections. I know, I know, that sounds very interesting indeed, and in your head you probably already have a few ideas of what that is all about, and me too. But rather infuriatingly, not only did no one talk about this in the Warcraft Direct, but none of the interviews I found in the wake of the stream ask about it either, which is frankly very poor from those lucky enough to be given developer interviews. I am extremely disappointed in, um, me. Yeah, sorry about that. I think when we see this, most of us are imagining different backgrounds for our warband camp screen here, aren't we? Maybe like a nice spot in Grizzly Hills, or Suramar, or any of those other classic zones that are well-established favourites. And that might well be the case. For sure, Ian did say the last time we interviewed him at Gamescom that different backgrounds would be an obvious development and something that they were looking at. Personally, I think it's far more likely that if we are presented with a number of different background options in 11.1, that they'll start with the most recent War Within zones and work their way backwards over time. Like Heritage Armor, this is the kind of thing that devs will be able to add to constantly with any patch they feel like it. That's assuming that we are starting with a modest selection, which, you know, always good to keep expectations low. But who knows, maybe they already have dozens prepared and this will be a veritable smorgasbord of new background options options. Maybe they'll be connected to achievements to get us engaging with those old zones and content again, or at the very least have us visiting those zones to talk to someone and set up camp to collect the new background. That would be cool. Or maybe some will be trading post rewards, or maybe this doesn't refer to new backgrounds at all, but actually new items for your camp, like a new tent to swap out for the old one, a suckling pig roasting on the campfire, a naked statue of your bard that gives you an awesome buff every morning, that kind of thing. And actually, now I mention it, which of these options would I even prefer? Well, both! Obviously, but you know, it's good to keep low expectations, but also, yeah, a hundred new camp background locations with quest lines to unlock them and a thousand new items to place and swap out in your camp. Sounds about right. Can't wait. Moving on in the air, patch 11.1.5 is where it starts to get really intriguing with new content, Nightfall. Considering that patch also has horrific visions revisited as a feature, it seems fair to speculate that whatever happens at the end of the raid results in, well, a whole lot of void being all over the next patch, and how could that be? Well, Mark Collada told the Comeback Kids that Goblins have historically worked on objects that are shaped like plates and other parts of the content that we've released previously. There was, you know, a dragon that sort of broke the earth, uh, and people were hammering plates on him, and there was a certain artifact that we went after, so uh, going to undermine, I think from there, you kind of start piecing things together and uh, it'll make itself more clear. And he's referring to Elementium, a super mega better than adamantium metal that we see goblins specifically hammering onto Deathwing's body in the Cataclysm trailer. And the artifact he's talking about is either the Dragon Soul, which Deathwing used to control the dragon aspects and which was destroyed before Cataclysm and then retrieved from the War of the Ancients 10,000 years earlier during Cataclysm to defeat Deathwing in Cataclysm and then returned to the War of the Ancients again afterwards, or, far more likely in my opinion, it's the Focusing Iris, the blue dragon artifact that the Aspects used to aim the power of the Dragon Soul at Deathwing, which was stolen by Xylem in Legion, and which certain melee classes had to recover for their Mage Tower challenge. Supposedly he was doing it to help the Burning Legion, but I mean, looks pretty voidy to me. After we won the Iris back, it was returned to Dalaran for safekeeping, and... oh... 
Uh oh. Yeah, I think the events surrounding Liberation of Undermine leading into Nightfall might have something to do with the focusing Iris, and definitely appear to be ramping up the shadowy goodness for, we think, the climactic 11.2 patch. When I saw Horrific Visions revisited, I assumed that the visions would be returning to new locations. Perhaps we'd get a voidy Dornigal to fight through. But again, in that Comeback Kids video, the way Ian talks certainly makes it seem like it's just the BFA ones back again. These were single player or group scenarios set in Stormwind and Ogrimmar, which were meant for upgrading your legendary cloak, which in turn would allow you to progress further into the visions week by week to win corrupted mementos, which were used to increase player power and buy cosmetic stuff. That was very BFA, and I suspect that the 11.1.5 version will focus less on the player power element and more on the cosmetic reward bit. And hopefully no legendary cloak leveling because I absolutely hated that shit. No more cloak leveling, I beg. But these were pretty fun first time round, even if I didn't love them. I think as far as some cool thematic old content being dusted off, a 0.5 patch is the perfect place for them. Onwards to patch 11.2. The roadmap initially sparked huge discussion here by not promising a new zone for the second major patch of War Within, something that was hastily rectified in a subsequent edition. Thank goodness, because that is not a discourse that I want to be having for the entirety of next year, okay? So just to clarify, 11.2 does have a new zone. My money is still on Koresh, the home of the Ethereals that was mostly destroyed by the Void Lord Dementius, the all-consuming, who I predict as the final boss of the expansion. But whatever it is, very hot on the heels of that patch at the end of summer 2025, so very likely at Gamescom is the official reveal of Midnight. And I don't want to spend too much time getting hype about the next expansion already when we're still in the early days of War Within, but it is undeniable that even before player housing was added to its list of features, there was a buzz and excitement around Midnight, which is undeniable because it's just got so many elements that seem like Warcraft expansion home runs. A revamped Silver Moon, ultimate wishlist material, the final ultimate battle against the Void, the best baddies, it even being the second part of a kind of trilogy, which are often the best parts. The fact that it's called Midnight, which is like clearly a very badass title, and now player housing too. This is such a great recipe and its reveal is going to be huge. It's also likely that the alpha for that expansion will be relatively soon after, possibly while 11.2.5 and 11.2.7 go live and tell the story leading up to the events that we will see play out in that alpha. This is only a gut feeling, but I personally think that Blizzard might be planning to do away with the season 4 fated season that we saw in Shadowlands and Dragonflight to try and work around an 18 month release cadence for the World Soul Saga expansions, I would not be surprised at all if 11.2.7 is the last patch of the War Within before the pre-patch in early 2026. A theory definitely strengthened by the fact that it definitely looks like that most celebrated of Midnight features, player housing, is coming before the end of 2025. This Hearthstone, which obviously meant player housing, but which the community, because the community cannot help themselves, instantly started speculating wasn't actually player housing, no, but actually something to do with Warlords of Draenor, because the symbol pops up in Lords of War, to the extent that Blizzard had to modify the logo on the roadmap to make it more explicit that no, this is it, this is housing, or at least the beginning of it. Does this symbol mark the launch and implementation of player housing, or does it just mark the reveal of it. Well, I don't know, obviously, but just for my own enjoyment, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it means that this is when it will be implemented in the game. And that would seem like a good idea to me. We all remember how Garrisons broke the launch of Warlords and made it literally unplayable for tens of thousands of people for quite a long time. When that expansion launched, if this can be ready to soft launch completely separate from Midnight and have months to iron out the inevitable problems that a game 
running a feature it was never designed to run will cause, that's probably wise. Uh, also, this green glow on the bar obviously means Legion Remix at the end of the expansion. Ian pretty much confirmed it, we are getting a Legion Remix, yay, and that's really cool. I think there is a lot of fun to be had with Order Halls and Artifact Weapons and Mage Tower, including the suddenly perhaps very relevant Xylem and the Focusing Iris stuff. That's cool, but we know what Remix is and how it works. Please can I talk about player housing now? Please? Thank you. So obviously, we don't know much about it. Ian was very adamant that there is nothing that he will tell us in this round of interviews, and that's honestly fair enough. It feels good enough to know that at last, it is happening. And I'm not even exaggerating. Every day when I wake up, I live in a world where we know that WoW will have player housing in like just over a year. It's kind of wild. And I want to be very, very clear here, okay? I don't think that we can gather much from the teaser trailer, which almost certainly doesn't include any actual assets from whatever Blizzard are working on, or from the interviews, but we can gather something. For example, Ian has been very keen to stress everywhere that he's been talking that this is not Garrisons 2.0. The Garrisons themselves were never meant to be player housing, but a riff on Warcraft's RTS base building roots. He has categorically stated that there will be no significant player power connected to player housing, which was, in my opinion, the main failure of Garrisons, giving players a self-sufficient personal instance which gave them everything they needed, destroyed hub cities and a huge social aspect of the game. It's the Warcraft dream after all, burning crates of salvage in a furnace and then selling the contents to a man that stands next to the furnace. It's epic. There needs to be no auction house, no bank, no trading post, no relevant herb garden or mine. And you know what? It sounds like they get that. That teaser trailer features a training dummy. Fair. A weapons rack. Cool. A dragon head trophy. Awesome. That is exactly the kind of shit that we want. I was super cheeky in our interview, and even though Ian was clearly done talking about housing, I pointed out that this is a very Alliance looking location, to which he replied, Uh, yeah. There will, there will be more than Stormwind. There will be more than Stormwind, which might suggest that Stormwind definitely is planned to be an option. I know, I'm such a shit. We did a whole video on how we think player housing should be done in WoW eight months ago, when it first became obvious, to me at least, that player housing was very much on the horizon. And that entire vid is still 1000% relevant. You should give it a little spin because I think it's actually really good and sets out my thoughts on all this in way more detail than I could ever do here. But. I do think we'll be looking at properties in Stormwind and Ogrimmar with the initial launch of this feature next winter before that extends to, well, Silvermoon and beyond over the coming years. Because that's another thing Ian has made very clear. This is evergreen content that will be built on and expanded upon forever. It's not an expansion specific thing. One thing I've seen people worried about is that WoW's player housing will be half baked. I saw Preacher's video saying how he was concerned WoW's player housing could never be on the level of Final Fantasy XIV or Guild Wars 2, the amazing building from scratch options that they have, and honestly, I don't think it ever could. But I certainly don't think that after all this time, WoW's player housing will be a small or under-realized feature. In fact, if there's one thing that I'm incredibly confident of, it is that whether it turn out good or bad, WoW's player housing is going to be big and extensive in its own way. Partly because it's taken them this long, partly because they must know they can secure the lifespan of WoW for the next decade, probably kind of forever, if they nail this one. From the never-ending collectathon in-game to the life it will potentially breathe into professions and achievements, and yes, sadly, the in-game shop. If player housing is a success, then even if Blizzard eventually stop creating content for this game and put it on maintenance mode, there will always be people willing to keep up a sub and pay to play it. And now we know it's happening, in hindsight, it's very noticeable just how much of WoW's story is about 
building homes in the last couple of years. We are all honorary citizens of a major sill, which is still being built. The Dranai are building a new flying city for themselves. Gilneas has just opened up again with a whole bunch of empty buildings. The ruins of Lordaeron are being resettled by the Forsaken. All the Earthen keep talking about how many empty housing units there are in Dornegal right now, and a huge part of the recent Alaria short story is dedicated to describing Silvermoon's robust house building program too. It's starting to feel like all of this may not be accidental. But what do you think? Where do you stand on player housing and what it should be? What are you excited about in 11.1? .1? Let us know in the comments below and thank you for joining us today. If you liked this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all our work happen. And patrons, seriously, thank you because without you, there would be a whole lot less Taliesin and Evatel. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. And remember, my name is Taliesin. Cheerio!